Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is September 2nd. It's my weekly shop update. So I have a bunch of things that I am excited to share with you this week. It's been a little bit here, probably two weeks since the last update, and I have a lot of things going on and a lot of things that I'm super, super excited to share with you. So before we get into it though, I do want to say a big congratulations to Nathaniel who won a copy of Scott Groh's book on hardwood edging from the last shop update. So congratulations Nathaniel, let's jump into it. So on the spice boxes, since the last time we spoke, I believe I've released two more lessons on these. So the first one was on the alternatives box, which is this guy here that was covering the actual assembly and gluing it up and all of that. And this week's, oh look, tape. <laughs> And this week's video was all about getting the lid off of here and then creating all of the joinery on all of the internal boxes which go inside of the, oh, there's that lid, the main case. So these boxes have nine internal boxes so you can store us for like spices or teas or whatever you might have nine different varieties of. And you can take the little boxes out, you can put them wherever you want to, put them on your counter or leave them in here or whatever. So it's just boxes inside of boxes and the next thing for these is going to be to get the bottoms on there and those boxes will be done and it's going to be hardware and finish from here. I'm on. It's hard to do up here. There we go. So that is where the little spice boxes are at. I am pretty pumped about these things. I well this, is, this one's cool and all but I am very partial to this, uh, this crotch box. I think it goes this way. So this one's got sequential crotch grain around the whole box and it's got a crotch top, burl, bottom. It's uh, <laughs> pretty, pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I like this one a lot. Even though this is all, of, this is just here to like cover all of the alternatives that you can do from the main project, which is this guy over here with the glass lid and a plywood bottom. This is uh, shaping up to be my favorite. So the next thing I was working on was sawing up a pecan log that was dropped off here last November by my buddy Phil. I finally got the thing up onto the mill and got it sliced up. So before we head out and take a look at that, let me show you some highlights from that adventure. So here is that pecan log all sliced up and uh, out here drying. This was a fun log to cut. I'm really liking the look of the pecan. It's got some really nice reds and oranges in it and uh, just some overall really interesting figures. So I'm looking forward to working with this once it's all dried. It's, uh, it's really cool. It's uh, definitely a very hard wood. It wasn't super hard to saw though. So that's nice. Kind of similar to my experience with the live oak that we talked about last time. It's supposed to be really hard to saw, but I didn't really find it all that difficult, so that's all I got about that. <laughs> so what used to be sitting right here was a log of silver maple that was really spalted and stuff. Last time I was talking about how I had brought that over to be vacuum dried. I did get those back. Both logs were vacuum dried, and that turned out really, really amazingly well. It was three days in the kiln to go from 15% down to 7%. And there was also a green slab that I had cut back in June that was in there as well. That went from wet essentially down to 8% in the same uh, time. So overall, some pretty ridiculously interesting technology. I'm looking forward to some more vacuum drying here in the future and working on some other projects, which I am about to share. So these uh, silver maple slabs came out nice and flat and uh, if you remember from this log, it has some interesting kind of rot thing going on up here where an old limb used to be and just tons and tons of spalting and just overall some really beautiful stuff. This log had some uh, metal inclusion as well. And here is one of the slabs with the inclusions. Before I show that up close, let me show you what that looked like when it was first cut. A lot of people told me that was the cross section of a barbed wire barb, 
but as the wood has shrunk as it's dried you can see more of the inclusion starting to show itself and this is some kind of brass and that really does appear to be some kind of copper so something that's probably not a barb i still say it's a staple or some kind of wire retaining thing so i still have a bunch of this available as you can see i think about half of it has sold already, but the rest is still available if anyone is interested in some sweet silver maple spalted, spalted silver maple slabs. That is a mouthful. These are five and a half feet long and these are eight and a half feet. So a couple months ago, I shared how I had cut the biggest log I've ever cut on my sawmill. My buddy Eric brought by the biggest log I've ever had on there and we cut it up into normal size slabs as well as something experimentational. We cut some half inch thick full width slabs from that log. And a couple of those thin slabs are back as this. Eric put this together. This is a standard home center, pre-hung, hollow core interior door that's been veneered on both sides with a thin slab. And then there is an epoxy pour around it. So you have that epoxy wood look, but you're only about a quarter inch thick, which is a really cool concept. So we're really excited about this idea of taking you know, a big piece of wood cutting them thin and then drying them perfectly flat in the vacuum kiln. And then you can pretty much veneer those down to whatever you want and do crazy stuff like this. And then here is another idea or concept or something. This is just a piece of wall art or it could be a tabletop or whatever. That's just stuck down to some plywood and has an epoxy pour around it. So as another example as possible with that, there is another example. <laughs> and here's the off cut for making that door so you can see how big that slab was when it started. This is a pretty darn big piece of wood right here. <laughs> so Eric and I loaded up the vacuum kiln with a bunch of walnuts. So you'd have something like this as a little bit of a test concept. So we have several hundred boards that are uh, various lengths from four to seven feet long that we are drying right now as sort of a trial run. And we are looking to bring those to market and offer them for sale as well as this bigger stuff too. So it's kind of a developing thing that I'm working on with Eric and I'm really, really excited about it. <laughs> I'm excited about a lot of things, but this is something I am especially excited about. <laughs> so I'll have more details on this stuff as we get further with the development, but the next video I'll put out will be the one on sawing that log that turns into the door as soon as I buy a doorknob for that door so I can shoot the outro. <laughs> so that's all I've been up to this week. Let's take a look at some viewer projects. First this week is a carved spoon by Patricia. The spoon is carved from a piece of beech firewood which had a good amount of spalting. Patricia's boyfriend Ron made a video of the carving process and it's up on his YouTube channel and I'll leave you a link to that to check out. Next this week is a porch table by Pete. Pete made this table for the screen porch at his parents cottage. It's made from rustic hickory and the base is done with mitered Morrison tenon joinery. The voids and knot holes are filled with a pour bowl epoxy and it's finished with a Czar exterior water-based polyurethane. Next is a hall table by Matt. Matt says this is his first piece of real indoor furniture. It's made from curly cherry and the whole thing was made old school with a mallet, planes, and chisels. Matt doesn't have any power tools yet. <laughs> Next is a wooden knife by Andrew. Andrew is 15 years old and he made this knife for a friend. The blade is made from bloodwood and the handle is made from bakote. Andrew did the majority of the resawing and shaping on a bandsaw that he inherited from his grandmother when she passed away. And don't forget, at the end of the month, I'll be presenting at the Woodsmith Workshop. I have a session on working with slabs, and I'm also doing the lunch keynote on milling your own lumber. So if you're interested in attending that event, I will leave you a link down in the description. But I think that's all I have for this week. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy working.